Welcome to week 18 of Math with Mrs. Bibb. On the actual PDF that I loaded to the Google Drive, the warm-up will be changed. Make sure to fill in your table of contents. Complete the warm-up that's on the new PDF that's posted in Google Classroom. Then you're going to need Student Journal page 176 and 177 and a sheet of scrap paper or a sheet of paper to do an extra little portion of your notes on. First thing we're going to talk about are radical and rational exponents. I want you to remember that when you have a rational exponent, that's talking about a fraction for an exponent. I want to draw a picture here where it says notes to help you remember this algebra rule that's given. A to the m divided by n. What I normally do is I draw this figure. Students will tell me it looks like broccoli. I don't mean for it to look like broccoli. Hopefully you know I mean for that to look like a tree. And then I ask the question, what is here under the ground of a tree? And hopefully you remember the root is under the ground of a tree, and then on top is our exponent. Now what I mean by root, the number on the bottom determines if you have square root, cube root, the fourth root, so on and so forth. The exponent is the number that is actually the exponent on the number under the radical. Now you can also write it like this, the way this is written. I usually do it in reverse, and I'll show you in just one moment. For the examples here on Student Journal, page 176, the first thing we need to do is write the, each of these as a radical. So I'm going to go through and put a radical symbol on each of these. n is my root, so I have square root here, or you don't need that little 2. I have cube root here. I have the fourth root here, the fifth root, the eighth root, and the fourth root. Okay, let's see. And then the number a goes underneath, so I'm going to do the square root of 64, the cube root of 27, the fourth root of 256, the fifth root of 243, the eighth root of 256, and the fourth root of 10,000. I think all of us can handle the square root of 64. We know that's eight. The cube root of 27 we may have to talk about. Let's talk about cubing numbers. One cubed is one. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. Therefore, I know that the cube root of 27 is 3. Let's do fourth root. 1 to the fourth power is 1. 2 to the fourth power is 16. 3 to the fourth power is 81. 4 to the fourth power is 256, I do believe. 4 to the 3rd is 64, and then 64 times 4 is 256. So I know the 4th root of 256 is 4. The 5th root of 243, so I need 1 to the 5th power, 2 to the 5th power. And if you'll notice the pattern, I'm just multiplying the previous number times 2. If 2 to the 4th power is 16, then 16 times 2 would be 2 to the 5th power. If 3 to the 4th power is 81, then 3 to the 5th power would be 81 times 3, which is 243. So the 5th root of 243 is 3. I hope this is making sense. So let's do the 8th root, and I can't do that quick way, to, but it's okay. 1 to the 8th power is 1. 2 to the 8th power, well, if 2 to the 5th power is 32, 2 to the 6th power would be 32 times 2, which is 64. 2 to the 7th power would be 64 times 2, which is 128. 2 to the 8th power would be 128 times 2, 
which is 256. So the eighth root of 256 is 2. Okay, um, fourth power, and I was already on that, so um, 5 to the fourth power, 6 to the fourth power, I'm not going to do all these because I hope you recognize, 10 to the fourth power is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10,000. So the fourth root of 10,000 is 10. Hopefully all of that makes sense. I'm going to go back and put a block around all my answers. Anything you don't understand, write down your questions so we can talk about it in class or during our Google Meet. Next page. Write the expression in rational exponent form, which means write the expression like this, where your root is on the bottom and your exponent is on the top and you have your base. So for number 13, my base is 4. For number 14, my base is negative 8. And number 15, my base is 15. I'm going to have a fraction exponent. Let's go through and put our root. The root goes on the bottom. Fifth root. Cube root. Fourth root. And hopefully you recognize there's only one number left. 3 goes in the numerator here. That's my exponent of 2. And that's my exponent of 7. Those are my answers for 13, 14, and 15. Now we're going to go in reverse for 16, 17, and 18. We're going to put a radical, like we did on those beginning problems on the last page. We are going to put our base under that radical. We're going to put the root in the little corner, so the bottom number, the denominator, is our root. And then we're going to put the exponent. And I always put the exponent on the inside. You're welcome to write it the way they write it, but I always put it here. Those are the same thing. This is the same thing as what I had just written. So I'm going to put a 3 here and a 3 here. Hopefully that makes sense and you understand what that exponent means. Next, we're going to evaluate those expressions. Now that list I made on that first student journal page may help you to do this. The first thing I would do is go through and put my radicals. Make your radicals for each of these. Thirty-two negative 64, 343, 256, negative 729, negative 625. Let's put the root on each of these. The fifth root So I've got the fifth root, the square root, so I don't have to put that there, but you're welcome to put that there. The cube root, the eighth root, the sixth root, and the fourth root. And I think I am going to go ahead and put this exponent on the outside. It'll make it easier in the long run. And so I'm going to put my exponent on the outside and my exponent on the outside exponent on the outside uh, exponent out here and exponent out here and now I'm going to find the e each of those the fifth root of 32 so I need that whole chart of 1 to the 5th power is 1, 2 to the 5th power is 32. So the 5th root of 32 is 2. So 2 is the answer inside the parentheses, and 2 squared is 4. Okay, the next one, I want the square root of negative 64. Hmm. 
can I multiply a number by itself and get negative 64? No. So this one's not possible. Interesting. Okay, the next one, the cube root of 343. So let me do 1 to the third power is 1, 2 to the third power is 8, 3 to the third power is 27. I'm multiplying quickly in my head. 4 to the third power is 16 times 4, which is 64. 5 to the third power is 125. 6 to the third power is 216. 7 to the third power is, I believe that's 343. Okay, so um, the cube root of 343 is 7. And 7 to the second power is 49. So that's the answer to number 21. Here's the answer to number 19. Next, the eighth root of 256. So I need one to the eighth power, which we know that's not the answer. Two to the eighth power. Two to the fifth power is 32. Two to the sixth power is 64. Two to the seventh power, I think we did this on another page, so you might want to look it up, is 128. And two to the eighth power is 256. So that's the number I wanted. The eighth root of 256 is 2, and 2 to the seventh power, I just said it, is what? 128? 2 to the seventh is 128. For the next one, I need the sixth root. Mm. Is there a number? Oh, actually, this one is different. Number 23 is different from number 20. I cannot include, let me get my eraser. I cannot include that negative sign. Oh, and I can't erase because I paused my video. Whoopsie. I know what I can do. I can use white like I do in the classroom. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna put that negative on the outside. So remember that. There's a difference between it being in parentheses and being negative, and I just wasn't paying attention, and being negative in the parentheses already. So then my negative sign's out here. So negative, whatever I get, then I'm going to raise it to the fifth power. So the sixth root of 729. So um, 1 to the sixth power, I'm sorry, it's so much noise. 1 to the sixth power is 1. 2 to the sixth power is 64, because 2 to the fifth is 32. 32 times 264. 3 to the 6th power, let's see, 3 to the 3rd is 27. 3 to the 4th is 81. 3 to the 5th is 243. 3 to the 6th, um, 729, that's what I want. Let me erase that. So 3 to the 6 to 729. So the 6th root of 729 is 3. Um, then this is negative 1. That's what that negative stands for. 3 to the 5th power, I'm sure I just said it, 3 to the 5th power is, I think it was 243. 3 to the 3rd power is 27. 3 to the 4th power is 81, 3 to the fifth power is 243, and then negative 1 times 243 is negative 243. Okay, let's look at the last one. Okay, so is number 24 like number 20 or like number 23? And the negative is inside the parentheses, so it's like number 20. 20. Can I take the fourth root of negative 625? Or can I raise something to the fourth power and get a negative? No, so it's not possible to do number 24. Okay, let's look at 25. 
the radius r of a sphere is given by the equation r equals a divided by 4 pi to the 1 half, where a is the surface area of the sphere. The surface area of a sphere is 1,493 square meters. Find the radius of the sphere to the nearest tenth of a meter. Use 3.14 for pi. So I'm going to fill in what I know for that equation. The surface area is 1,493 square meters. So A is 1,493 square meters. We want, we want to find R. A is 1,493 square meters. And it says to use 3.14 for pi. I may need a calculator for this. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 4 times 3.14. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as the square root. So my root is 2, and this is to the first power, so I don't need to put anything on the inside. 1,493, and then 4 times 3.14. I will need a calculator when I divide. 16, 4 times 56, so... Uh, 12.56. I'm going to grab a calculator and do 1,493 divided by 12.56. That's 118.87. So I get R equals the square root of 118. 0.87. So I'm going to take the square root of 118.87. If you don't know how to take the square root on your calculator, let me know and I'll help you with that. But the square root of 118.87 is approximately, I'm going to put R is approximately, oh, it says to the nearest tenth of a meter. So I don't have to approximate. Hold on. Let me get rid of that. So I get 10.90. So to the nearest tenth would be 10.9, and it's re measured in meters. So the radius is 10.9. All right, I think we just have one more page. Now we're going to simplify radicals. And this is very, very, very important. This is a skill that you really need to learn and master. And the faster you can learn and master it, the better. Um, the radicals on my Smart Notebook software will not put that um, line over top, so let me go ahead and do that. You'll need a piece of paper. I would make a list of perfect squares if I were you. It's not any kind of magic list. One times one is one. Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. Four times four is 16. Five times five is 25. So on and so forth. Now here's what I want to do. I want to make a list of the numbers, the factors of 20. So what can I multiply to get 20? 1 times 20. 2 times 10. 4 times 5. I believe that's all the factors of 20. And then what I want to do, I want to find a factor of 20 that's in this list over here that's in my perfect square list. And I actually want to find the biggest one. So sometimes I may have more than one, but I want the biggest perfect square. So when you look at my list of factors, what, how many perfect squares do I have, and what's the biggest one? Well, I have two perfect squares. I have one and I have four. Four is the biggest perfect square. So that's the one we're gonna use. We're gonna rewrite 20 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. The square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 5. That's my answer. I don't want decimals on these, so don't use your calculator. We want to have a simplified radical. So that's the answer to number 1. For number 2, I want to do the same thing. I want to list the factors of 45. 1 times 45, 2 won't divide evenly into 45, 
3 times 15, oops, I messed that up, 3 times 15, 4 won't divide evenly into 45, 5 times 9, 6 won't divide evenly into 45, I believe that's it. So then we're going to look at our list. What's the biggest perfect square that we have? We have 1 and we have 9. 9 is my biggest perfect square. So that's the pair of factors I'm going to use that will work for this problem. I'm going to rewrite the square root of 45 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. What's the square root of 9? 3. 3 times the square root of 5 is my simplified answer for number 2. Then number 3, I'm going to do the same thing. Now eventually you're going to be able to do the factors in your head and think of the perfect square. But for now, let's write them so we can go through that thought process together. Um, 50, the factors of 50. 1 times 50. 2 times 25. It's a terrible 25, I'm so sorry. 3 won't go into 50. 4 won't go into 50. 5 times 10. And I think that's it. And the biggest perfect square I have is 25. I didn't change my color, but that's okay. The biggest per perfect square I have is 25. All right. And when you're rewriting, you're rewriting using that pair of factors that contains your biggest perfect square. So the square root of 50 is going to be rewritten as the square root of 25. I always put my perfect square first times the square root of 2. The square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 2. That's my simplified radical. Okay, so for 108, 1 times 108. I'm going to list those factors down here just so I'll have more space. 1 times 108. 2 times 54, I think. 3 will go into 108 because 1 plus 0 plus 8, add these three digits together, 1 plus 0 plus 8 is 9, and so 3 goes into 9. Okay, so 3 times what? 3 goes into 108, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 goes into 18, 6, so 36, 3 times 36. 4... Will 4 go into 108? Sometimes I just have to do this. 2 times 4 is 8, 9, 10, 28, 27. Yes, 4 times 27. Oops, and I wrote 25. 5 won't go into 108. I think 6 will. 6, 1, 6 goes into 48, 8 times. 6 times 18. There may be more factors, but I can see right now that this is going to be my um, pair of factors that contains the biggest perfect square. So that's going to be this right here. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 108 as the square root of 36. Times the square root of 3. The square root of 36 is 6. 6 times the square root of 3. 200. 1 times 200. 2 times 100. 3 won't go into it. 4 times 50. 5 times 40. 10 times 20. This is going to be my um, biggest perfect square. That's going to contain my biggest perfect square. 100 is the biggest perfect square. So it's going to be the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. The square root of 100 is 10 times the square root of 2. Okay, one more. Um, 128. 1 times 128. 2 times 64, I think. Yes. 3, 8, 9, 10, 11. 3 won't go into it. 4, I believe, will go into it. 4 times 30. 
32? Yes. And I think there's more factors, but right here is going to be the biggest one. 2 times 64. So I would rewrite the square root of 128 as the square root of 64 times the square root of 2. The square root of 64 is 8. 8 times the square root of 2. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, you will master this. It may take some time if that didn't make sense, but you will master it. And I think that's all the notes. Let me go look. Yes, it is. There's the page in the textbook that you need to complete for your practice. And we'll have our assessment sometime. And that's it. Have a wonderful day.